going to go ahead and talk about some gaming news. And the hot ticket item this week was there was a Nintendo Indie, what do they call it? Indie World. I don't know if they use the word direct. I use the word direct because that's how they've conditioned me. But they call it Nintendo Indie World. They don't call them Nindies anymore, which is kind of a shame. Nindies is cute and fun. That's a good pun. What? Oh, yeah, Nindies is a great pun. Yeah, Nindies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and walk through some of the games that are coming to Switch from independent developers. The cool thing is a lot of these were like kind of like surprise drop, you know, out now. Yeah, a lot of shadow drops, at least three, maybe four, um, especially three or four ch- worth checking out. It wasn't just like, ah, okay, maybe, but no. And, and a lot of them did come to other consoles. We'll try to point out which ones didn't. Um, and a lot of them were available already, but it's still nice when you're like finding out a game's coming to a console that you like, and it's going to be there literally right in that moment. So, first thing up was Supergiant Games it announced that Hades is coming uh, to Nintendo Switch in fall. Uh, Hades is a cool, procedurally generated roguelike where you are the son of Hades. I don't remember. I don't think there's a canonical son of Hades in Greek mythology, so it's probably like a character they created all on their own. And um, uh, I'm really stoked because this game's been in early access on the epic game store exclusively for a while and this is basically their 1.0 official release and it's coming to all the other consoles as well um but we and that was probably assumed you were never sure if they're going to bring it to switch or not because they you know who knows sometimes things just don't come to the switch for some reason uh, but it is it's coming everywhere and i am super excited i will be picking this up day one Oh yeah, and I will be I will be mooching off you day one uh, if we don't go <laughs> have these because this looked uh, uh, like an amazing game. So it's Super Giant Games. They also made uh, Bastion and uh, Trans- Transistor, I believe, as well, and, and uh, Empire, and- um, like two or three years ago. Okay, cool. Yeah, but but the thing I liked about this is it, it kind of looked it's so it's it's iso it's isometric. It kind of looks like Children of Morta meets Dead Cells. So more Children of, of Morta in terms of like the way you traverse in the combat because like Dead Cells is more of a a side scroller Metroidvania sort of thing and this is not that. Uh, but in terms of like the vibe that I got from it, it was a little more Dead Cells. And the fact that like once you die you kind of restart at the beginning and it's that kind of roguelike. Uh, but then I assume, you know, with this being super giant and the way Bastion was done, it's going to have that nice, like, rich voice narrative going over the, you know, the, the game as you as you're playing, which also Children of Morta has that as well, mm-hmm. which is, is really cool. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked about this. I think it's going to uh, be a fun, fun game to get get my hands on. Yeah, there's not a lot of quote unquote sure things out there, but. By all again, because this has been out for a while, this game has really, I mean, no secrets about it because people have been playing it for like probably over a year now. I think they announced uh, it at last 2018 year's is when I think the uh, the alpha has started. For okay, so wait, that's two years. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so again, like I'll, the people who were talking about it, like it's this, like, oh, who knows what's going to happen? It's kind of like this, even though you could easily go find out exactly what it's like. So go right. do that if you want. But this is a slam dunk, and by all accounts, this is their best game yet like according to everybody like all the things that they do well or have done and introduced in their previous games like jason mentioned with the um the voiceover and just the really good art styles and aesthetic they just cranked it up to 11 for this game and uh, it's you know it's a familiar and really fun environment like people love greek gods you never get tired of either killing zeus or helping zeus whatever zeus is up to and you know the same thing with hades poseidon all those people so bring it on all right. Absolutely. Next was some 90s aesthetic web browser game, which I didn't even get the name of, and it didn't look like something I was ever going to play. Did you catch it? You got no, a and I'm, no. Um, what, are you talking about Hypnospace? Could be. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it is. It's a 90s internet simulator. Yeah. Um. I. I not for me. Not for me. But it is I out on August 27th. I didn't like the internet in the 90s, so I don't want to <laughs> go back there. <laughs> Next up was Spiritfarer, which is a kind of super cute, uh, it had like an anime-esque, anime-inspired at least, um, kind of cinematic before it showed the gameplay, which for the most part has the same exact style as the trailer did. It's a management game, so you're going to be, you know, helping people and building a town or whatever. The theme, though, is that these are spirits, some kind of afterlife, and you're some sort of like fairy man fairy woman witch thing you got this kind of star-shaped hat thing i don't know it looks weird it it looks very ghibli inspired too studio ghibli miyazaki all that kind of stuff 
Um, I believe that was one that dropped. Yep, it was dropped that day, so it's out now on Switch. Um, I really love everything about it. I love the music. I love the way it looked, the concept. You know, I like management games. I like my Harvest Moons and stuff. I'm going to let it sit on the wish list for a while, though, because these kind of games can be huge time sinks, and I just don't have any of that so he's got no time he's even though we're an indie podcast he's playing too many triple a games too many final fantasy world of final fantasy maxima all the final fantasies final fantasy 9 final fantasy world uh whatever we'll talk about we'll talk about it later dropping that game uh any comments on spirit fair jason no uh, anime has never been my thing uh outside of dragon ball z uh so and princess mononoke but so no no love for me for me on this game but our yeah. uh, next up was garden story by developed by pictogram which i think might just be one dude he introduced himself as if he is pictogram this is, which is also again the name of the developer or maybe the person or both i, I don't know um but it, you are it looked like you were like some sort of squid octopus thing but it turns out you're a grape and oh. then you go yeah <laughs> right i don't know why well i mean it makes sense because it's garden story and grapes grow in the garden but then why did he have like little tentacle legs? Well, what else? They're his vines. What else are you going to move with? But they were like grapey colored. You know Maybe what? I can't, I can't answer it for you because I'm I'm not pictogram, okay? You're not pictogram. Um, it looked like some sort of crossover between yet yeah, another like kind of semi-management game, but also it had seemed to have like these very light action moments in a z- sort of Zelda-esque kind of, you know, world style layout kind of thing. Um, the mission is you have to stave off the rot, whatever that means. Uh, you see, you cl- see clearly moments where like you're picking tools and they do certain amounts of damage and you have to like, you know, defeat an enemy here and there. And then you go back to a town and you build up, make a building or whatever. And aesthetic wise, it, it very much looks like a Super Nintendo game, kind of that top down overworld mm-hmm. from Zelda, like the, the Super Nintendo Zelda yeah. feel. Not quite. <sighs> It had some pixeliness to it, but it also wasn't clearly wasn't hand drawn like Spirit Fairer was. Uh, somewhere kind of in between, basically. Uh, that's coming in twenty twenty one though, so I will also be putting that on my wish list. Next up, we have Subnautica and its expansion, Subnautica Below Zero. Uh, if you've ever heard of that game, it's because it's been out for a while. I actually played it for a couple hours, like sometime last year. Um, surprise it's coming to Switch. I, I was telling Jason earlier this week that I just never would have expected it, you know, from a graphical standpoint, which he kindly pointed out if The Witcher 3 and Doom can come to the Switch, then anything can, which is true. But it comes at a cost because it wasn't the perfect looking game to begin with, and it really doesn't look good on the Switch either. It, it looks like an N64 game from the trailer. That's, like it, that's it really too did. harsh, but it definitely uh, doesn't look good. Yeah. But from a gameplay standpoint, you had mentioned this was a little bit like Astroneer. Can you uh, it, expand on that? It, it's like a solo version, like there were with no option for multiplayer. But basically, you crash land on this ocean planet, and all you have to start off with is your little little escape pod. And you similarly have, you know, you have to have food or have to at least oxygen and water, maybe food as well. And you have a very set a number of recipes. You go out and you swim around and you gather resources, which you feed back into your research abilities to get more recipes to kind of expand your little base. And then you can go out further to find out what's going on, except whereas Astroneer was clearly just silly, goofy, fun times. Subnautica definitely has a, like a creepy underwater vibe that comes with like, you know, alien life forms living underwater, like stuff's going to kill you. You had mentioned that that was a little more intense. It is. It's way more like claustrophobic. And if you have any, I think it's thalassophobia is the fancy word for like, you know, f- fear of the unknown under the sea or whatever. Basically all the Cthulhu. I have that. Who, yeah. Holy well, cow. I never knew there was a word for it. Oh, thalassophobia <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, dude. The un- the ocean creeps me out and so does deep space. I think it's the openness and the fact that like. There's just so much around. You have no control, like no like safety blanket feeling. I don't like it at all. Yeah, thalassophobia is an intense and persistent fear of the sea. Can include the fear of being in deep bodies of water, fear of the yep. vast emptiness of the sea, of sea waves, sea creatures, and fear of distance <gasps> from land. Text that to me. I need to show Lauren that I did not make this up. Sure, sure. Coming right at you. So yeah, if you've got that, don't play this game. <laughs> okay, I'm not it's- playing this game. I, I'm, a, I'm legitimately afraid of whales. 
I, you know, I'm not from a conceptual standpoint, but if I were ever near one, I might pee my pants, which is fine well, because I'd be in the ocean. <laughs> well, then that's weird though, because I, I see what you're saying. If you were ever near, near a whale, like not in a boat, right? Right, right. Because I've gone whale watching before. Now it wasn't my choice to do this, and this may mm. have been where my fear developed. But um, yeah. Anyway. All right. So don't check out Subnautica. It's a terrible, terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Takashi and Hiroshi. Which no, is thank you. So, oh, dude, it looks so. I gotta give it props though. Why don't Heart, you like it? Heartwarming. It honestly looks like something that would depress me. Yes, that is the thing. Like, I, I guarantee the little brother dies in the end. I haven't yeah. played it. I don't know anything about it. But there's a trailer, and at one point you can clearly see he's in a hospital bed. So it's this. So the game, the story is told through these amazing looking claymation scenes or puppets. I don't know if they're puppets. It looks or it's like it's stop motion animation, is what it says. Okay, yeah, definitely stop motion. If it's claymation or if it's puppets, I'm not sure, but it's definitely stop motion. And you're this older brother who has a little brother, and the older brother's making a game, like a, you know, so it's a game within a game kind of situation, an RPG, and he's having his little brother test it. And it, that plays into the gameplay. So the little brother plays, and it's a side scrolly thing. It almost looks like, I don't know if you've ever played these kind of like side scrolly auto mobile games where it's quote unquote an RPG, except it all just kind of plays itself. It kind of looks like that, where you just kind of run into the enemy and either you're going to beat it or you're not, but you get to choose how strong the enemies are and you have to balance the little brother's stress versus his enjoyment. So if it's too easy, I imagine he wouldn't enjoy himself, but if it's too hard, it would be, you know, too stressful. And then again, there are these like story moments that you can see where, again, clearly something depressing is going on. So hopefully it has an uplifting bit at the end, but it does also seem like it could utterly crush your soul. It, it, it definitely, it definitely looks like you're trying to entertain your brother who's in the hospital and he's probably mm-hmm. going to die. Probably. And I just, I can't handle that. So that's, I, that's the only reason I'm like, I'm out on this. I can't, I can't handle that. I hear it's short though. So, and it has the air. So it has all the benefits of a walking sim, but none of the negatives as in it actually has gameplay. So that's why I'm kind of like, interested in it because like i do like the stories that usually come along with those just you know cerebral nothing else going on except the story kind of thing but at the same time it's like even when they're only like an hour and a half i'm like oh, this is still really boring yeah Which is weird because i love movies tv and books but i don't know when it's a video game i'm just too used to being able to do something so if i'm right. just clicking that button and i know that that's going to be the whole game like i usually just don't want to deal with it there are a couple of those. I don't know if you classify them kind of in the same boat, but like the um, another lost phone or whatever, mm-hmm. where it's kind of like a mystery and like a choose your own That's adventure. That's a little different because even that has more like like you have to make choices and you you look through the phone and like exactly it's a mystery you're piecing together. Right. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, I've been wanting more to play out. that with me because th- that song on Switch too. Yes, it is. I think I've seen that. I believe it's out. It was out that day too. Yep. It was released the same yep. day. So T- you can check that out. Yes. And uh, I'll put that on my wish list, but we'll we'll hold off for a little bit. Next up, we have Raji, an epic, an ancient epic. This was the most intriguing to me of all of them and the most likely for me to purchase within the next couple of days. Basically, it is an isometric action game with some side scrolling. It had like, through the very brief trailer I saw, there were lots of different kinds of action. So you had that kind of isometric, you know, you're just running third person action. There were also side scrolling platforming sections. And there were also moments where they were clearly like flying or gliding through the air. So it was like behind over the shoulder view, kind of like a Star Fox situation. Um, but it looked really cool. And it's based on ancient Indian Hindu influence. It's done by like an Indian studio over in India. So it's always cool to see some that which you don't see a lot of you know we get a lot of norse a lot of greek mythology but you don't get a lot of far east stuff in a lot of video games um but it was also out that day and i will probably be picking that up yeah it looked interesting i don't know if that that's not my favorite one but i think Mm -hmm. my favorite one is probably not one you would consider indie so Mm, yes we will get to that because i i think i had a note about that um but that was that okay okay so I feel like I was going to say one more thing about it. What was it? Oh, it's also very short. I'm hearing it's only about five hours long. So uh, always a plus, but, but with replay value. So again, if that five hours leaves you wanting more, I'm pretty sure you can get, you know, go back into it and, and explore, not explore, but like experiencing it in a slightly different way. 
Uh, next up, very funny title, Bear and Breakfast. I loved that title. <laughs> it's a really good one. Another little management adventure game. You are a bear who runs a B and B. That's I, about if, it. If if I was like twelve and had the summer off, this would be my jam, man. Mm-hmm. You, so for this one, it's it, it describes itself as a laid back management adventure game, which is already kind of like yes, laid back, yes, adventure game, yes. Um, because I I always get stressed out by those management games unless they're like this. Mm-hmm. Um. And you basically start from rubble, like broken down cabin in the woods, and you're a bear, and you have to upstart a B and B and make it like, you know, nice and start making money. And and anyway, it, it looks like it has a lot of deep customization. It's got some side quests, and um, I don't know that I'll ever play it, but the name is awesome. It looks super cute, and I'm not usually one for cute, but I like this. Yep, I loved it. Um, that one is a timed console exclusive coming in 2021. So next year. So be on the lookout for that. Next we have the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say maybe I'll catch a break and get laid off and I'll have some time and I can play this. Perfect. Can't wait. <laughs> mm, excuse me. Next we have the mm. uh, critically acclaimed A Short Hike. Um, I believe this came out last year. It is... Exactly what it is, uh, or exactly what the title says, it is a short hike. You are this little bird character, and you go on this little adventure through this kind of wilderness-esque area, but there's other characters, and you know it's not like you're completely alone. But um, I don't know a lot about it other than that people liked it a lot. You know, It kind of took them by surprise, but it was one of those indie darlings, so to speak. Um, and then it also launched that day, so it is out now on Switch as a timed console exclusive. Have you heard about this game before, Jason? I have not. Okay. All I, it's one of the, like, my indie card. You provoke your indie exactly. It's just one of those games where it's like, oh, you got to play short hike, and then no one says anything else about it because there's not much else you can say that either doesn't sound super generic, kind of like how I just described it, or completely gives away the game and everything that you can experience in it. That kind of reminds me of that other one that I cannot remember. That's a, oh, outer gosh. wilds. No, 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 no! It's mm-hmm. one that oh, you love it. It's an RPG. It's got you did a you did a uh, not a chaos run. You did some sort of run on it. Chaos run, where you killed everything, or maybe you didn't oh, kill it. Undertale, yeah, Undertale. It, Undertale. Like, was... it just just oh. in the way that you just like you can't really say much about it other than like oh, you got to play Undertale. It's true. You got to play Undertale, and it might not be for you, but you do have to play it. Like. Like you have to play it to just to make sure that you don't like. I have never been more wrong about a game than I was about Undertale, and I didn't hate Undertale by any stretch, but I didn't get Undertale until I watched a playthrough of it on the, um, on like the the what do they call it the pacifist run, and then I That's did my what own. It was. it was a pacifist run that I watched, and then I did the genocide run. That's which right. was exhilarating. <laughs> anyway. Not to get derailed on another awesome indie that came out forever ago. Next up is a really cool looking game called Card Shark. Yes. Yes. So basically, instead of just playing like traditional card games, you're this, you know, we're probably talking like mid 1800s, early 1900s. It's hard, hard to 18th put it century exactly. French society. Okay. So even further back, 18th century yeah. French society. But basically, yes, you are a, a, a cheat, you're a card cheat your goal is to play cards and cheat at playing cards. So rather than just, you know, playing poker, you're specifically taking motions and completing tasks to stack the deck in your favor. And um, basically it looked like kind of like mini games where you would kind of do, you know, like these sneaky shuffles or pull a card out of, you know, a sleeve kind of thing. And then it seemed like there were moments where your choices to cheat could potentially have an effect where someone pulls out a gun and shoots somebody else. And it's all very, you know, the the arts. It's not like a big bombastic thing. The art style is very simple and minimalistic, but it looked really cool. I agree. And the other cool thing about this particular game is that the, I think the art director, or I mean, it may have been a different position, but I thought it was or maybe creative director, whatever. He is actually the card shark. Like he knows yeah, he how went. to do these things in real life, and he said he implemented those mechanics into the game. So you'll kind of learn real life simple version of like how these things are pulled off which i thought was interesting 
Yeah, it was really cool. And yeah, that guy got on and he is, like you said, either the art director or the creative director slash car shark. And he was very French. Very, very French. Oh, yeah, totally. So that comes out 2021 as well. Next up, I believe, is the game Jason was referring to a moment ago, Torchlight 3. Yeah. How you feeling? I mean, so my here's my history with this game, and, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the people who originally designed uh, Diablo 1 and 2 the left blizzard and went on to, to, to form their own team and they created the torchlight series. And they so did. this is the third iteration of that. And it very much looks like Diablo and it very much looks like what Diablo would have become if it had stayed on its trajectory and not become Diablo three. Right. A little, a little cuter. Um, not that torchlight is like a baby game, but you know, Diablo is very, much what it is with the grim dark devil's angels thing um but i've played both torchlight one and two the company that was in charge of torchlight got purchased and then like kind of sacked and then you thought they weren't gonna do it but then they came out with this thing called torchlight frontier which was then re kind of like rebranded into torchlight three i think they were gonna go for some sort of games as a service approach and then the immediate and palpable backlash from fans was like so strong where they were like, uh, 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 no, um, we didn't mean that. We didn't mean that at all. It's Torchlight 3, we promise. Sure. And so basically, yeah, it's going to be Torchlight 3. Um, I like the way it looks. It looked like it was going to finally like be at home on a console. The first two were designed with PC in mind, which is fine. But then when you try to port it to console, it can be a little cumbersome. Uh, I don't have time for a game like this though. I mean, maybe because there is like a heavy focus on like being able to play it solo, kind of like back with D2. Not that you couldn't just like, you know, go crazy on the multiplayer side, but something like D3 was very much like, nah, you're going to want to play this with somebody. Path of Exile is also kind of like that too in some ways. Do you really see yourself playing this, Jason? I really don't. I just yeah. love the idea of it, but I, I, I think I will never recapture that magic of Diablo 2 in, in middle school. Like right. I just, I'm never going to have that again. I'll have other great gaming experiences, but I'm never going to have that again. And so chasing it is probably futile, honestly. Um, but this is another one of those games where it's like, if I was 12 or 13 and I had mm-hmm. the summer, you know, off, like this would be my jam. <laughs> I, it's are. this and bear and breakfast, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you aren't never free to play, if you are free to play all the time and you like these kinds of games, but you don't want like ultra complexity or even as complex as like D3. Like that was the thing about Torchlight 2. It's like, man, this isn't even as complicated as D3, which is not complicated at all. And I like that. I like that part of it. Um, and I like the world. You know, it's a unique little world. It's fun. Like it's a kind of a vague steampunkiness to it. And anyway, um, fall 2020 coming to Switch. It's already uh, out on PC, I believe. Are you sure? I just Googled the release date and said June 2020. Join early access now. So Okay, I got you. So it's probably early access is when it came out, or is the form that it's out in right now. Yeah. All right. Next, we had some puzzle game called Manifold Garden where you're like a cube, and I wasn't paying attention. Did you see anything about I this? I could not make heads or tails of this game. It looked like it was a puzzle game that messed kind of like played on perspective and, and physics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have to manipulate gravity and change your perspective to see the world in new ways, quote unquote, to solve the puzzles. Um, it's very out there in terms of the art style. If you've ever seen like one of those super artistic paintings, that's a, a lot of geometric figures and depth to it. That's kind of the art style of this, uh, but it's in a game puzzle form. And I don't know that there's much gameplay beyond that. I, I, it doesn't look like you're really a character so much as you're just manipulating the environments. So not for me, right. but um, kind of neat nonetheless. Yeah, I don't, I don't do three dimensional puzzles. I'm really, really bad at well, that. And so. you know the weird thing is, it's it, it is three dimensional, but it looks hand drawn. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it doesn't look computer three dimensional. It very much looks like mechanical pencil drawn. Gotcha. Okay. So I don't. Either way. It's out today. It's out now. You can go pick it up. One of the other games that was available at the or during the presentation. Next up, we have a platformer Evergate, which was basically this is our version of Ori in the Blind Forest. Like 
down to every little aspect. The little char- the main character is this white little spirit. Uh, the music was very Ori esque. The designs of the levels look Ori. You bounce off of objects like Ori does. Like none of this is bad. It's just it's just super obvious. Um, it has a slight like Celeste feel to it as well because it is technically like set in a more modern space but because you're a spirit in the spirit world things can kind of look a little bit more ori-esque but it does seem like it's going to deal with like themes similar to celeste with you know potentially depression afterlife death you might be playing as a dead kid for all i know it's not super clear to me you're a childlike spirit on a journey through life death space and time there you go and they describe the environments as beautiful yet haunting so yeah i think you're right on there yeah, that's pretty much exactly what the trailer said. Like I said, check it out if you like platformers. Again, it definitely a large emphasis on the ability to like launch yourself off of things. So they're really like either objects or floating balls of light or something that you could go from one to another. So you'd like throw yourself. So kind of like you know the jump in Celeste or even the jump in Ori, but you would ping pong off of a bunch of them to get from one location to another instead of just like one or two. Uh, also out now so go check that out if but, you want to but so is ori on the switch well so. the first one is yes yeah the, the first one, one is not sure no so check them both out both are i mean ori is an amazing game and this one's probably pretty good too. i i kind of want to buy ori on the switch now that i'm kind of back into indies and back you should games too. On switch. that'd be a great one to start with it's not long like the second one is a lot longer by comparison at least um the first one i think i beat in like eight or nine hours not bad and i did a lot of like hunting for like because you know it's 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 metroidvania-esque it's got that whole like you know okay you got this power up, <laughs> go find these things and get the health and get the- which means i w- i will 110 percent get lost and that's gonna take me a lot more time nah, the, the maps you know you won't you won't get lost you never underestimate my inability to <laughs> no bet. use maps no bet. <laughs> all right then then there was a montage that I told myself that I would get the names of the games from later, but then I didn't. So you can go check out all those other indie games that are coming to Switch soon. We're such a good indie podcast right now. Well, we made the decision after the indie showcase, so that's a good it's not point. our fault. Yeah. Then Which, they did their one more thing kind of situation that the Rex often do with Untitled Goose Game getting co-op. Which I thought was a strange thing to be like, ah, yes, this is our keystone thing. There are this now is two what you want. goose. Two geese. This goose. Two goose. Yeah. Well, it's like moose, you know, moose, goose. Moose, goose. Right? Because you wouldn't say meese. You would. Kit and I used to say meese all the time. It's well, like you would be joke. wrong. You'd be wrong. No, because said, well, that was our opinion, Jason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, that's coming out September 23rd, presumably to other consoles as well, not just the Switch. So, sadly, no Hollow Knight news, no Silk Song news. I'm sad. Poor Karch. Oh, well. Poor Karch. Poor me. Poor Team Cherry. I hope they're doing okay. I haven't, like, seen anything from them. Hope like, they're holding up, pe- you know? Yeah. Because they're, like, I'm sure they hired a couple more people, but the original game was literally just three people, which can sometimes, you know, in these kinds of situations, it's a toss-up. That was like, oh, man, maybe that's, like, super perfect for them, and none of this is affecting them at all, and progress is being made as it always would have been, or maybe it's somehow, like, even worse for them. I, it's hard to say. All right, that wraps up Nintendo Indie World.